how are you? Yeah, I'm good. How are you? Welcome back. Very good. <laughs> how are you? How was your campaign? Yeah, so um, my campaign's been going really well. Um, I wanted to focus on um, an audience that I already participate um, within London. I work and live in London. Um, and I work to support migrants with low levels of English. And um, specifically for this campaign, um, we did a a one-to-one -one listening series where we made sure that we uh, met infrequently with um, London migrants to talk about how you know issues that they were facing just to listen to any themes that were emerging and from that we framed the campaign so the themes that were emerging were around a bit of a lack of knowledge and confidence on okay. EU citizenship rights but also on standing up to hate crime because it is on the rise in London, I mean, especially all over the EU. And so we wanted to empower the students that come to these English language lessons to have the language and the confidence to access their rights, but also stand up to hate crime. Okay, so it was about like the dictionary and also like the exactly. way really to address certain, uh, yeah. like uh, in case of harassment or like specific situation, yeah. what were the core issues you identify about this? Yeah, so the students in the, we call them students because they're learning English <laughs> and course. they like to feel active in that way. Um, so they came together for a workshop, there were 20 migrants and the way that we structured it was to have two English language teachers supporting them with the vocab and the phrases they needed in English to learn about their rights. So we, we talked about words like xenophobia and hate crime and what they meant. But we also talked about real life issues. So examples that people had witnessed or had experienced of things that had happened to them that made them feel unsafe. Um, so we came up with these four examples from the group and then we did some role play in English. So practicing the language, but also building confidence to, in the future, stand up for mm. your rights and against any hate crime. And what's the age of your students? So our, <laughs> our students are adult migrants living in London and they are a range, from, from a range of different nationalities. A lot of EU student, students, but a lot of um, people from different parts of the world. And it's just so nice to bring people together on a regular basis to kind of learn to Together and break down cultural barriers, religious divides, and just kind of build a sense of community and take action together if, if they want to. So women, old a lot men. of women, a lot, lot of women. mainly women, mainly middle-aged women, and they bring their children along. We have nice. um, free crashes. <laughs> So we always have children. Second generation. Exactly. <laughs> we always have the children along in the in the space as well, and that's really nice that intergenerational learning as well. Very nice, very nice. Actually, how you gather your participants because like, mm. it's quite complicated. I will yeah. tell you about my personal story. Yeah. It, so it's difficult and that's why I thought for this campaign it would be useful to work with the audience that I already have a connection with. So English language classes, they come regularly and the way that we recruit them is through institutions such as schools mm. or churches or mosques children's centres, so places that migrants will be using or hopefully will know about and we just offer our English classes there uh, and it, it takes place in those spaces as well so being in a community space I think is really important especially for people that don't feel that comfortable they maybe they're newly arrived um, they want to, to they don't want to go out of their everyday spaces mm -hmm. Yeah, in a protected environment exactly. that they feel safe. Yeah. And it was easy to gather like uh, contacts from the association. What was the challenge actually you faced mm. in your campaign? So the challenge I think was um, focusing it down because there are so many issues and themes that emerged from our one-to-one -one meetings. Mm -hmm. Things ranging from people experiencing Islamophobia um, and feeling literally unsafe, uh, not wanting to leave the house. Um, to things like uh, not knowing their, their future after Brexit. So it was a real diversity of issues mm -hmm. and it was difficult to narrow it down and try and work out what would be most useful. Mm -hmm. But to do that, we used active listening. So really trying to um, work out whether any common themes that kind of were emerging and that the whole group could focus on. And that worked quite well, I think. Yeah, it's, a, it's also a way to build trust. And yeah. Like yeah, yeah, definitely.
Mm -hmm. I wanted to hear a bit more about your campaign, so do you want to let me know what it's about, how it started? Well, everything started in Brussels, where I'm based, and I really wanted to address like marginalized newcomers and, and try to enable them and empower them with actually some legal expertise about their rights. The initial idea as a, like, was to um, think about a theater course using the jurisprudence of the European Court of Justice and uh, to build around these uh, a sort of a training made with uh, role games and theater play uh, facilitator. Everything worked quite well in the shaping of the campaign. I found an amazing lawyer ready to deliver a session. I identified a case law that was actually very interesting based in Belgium. That was a bit a challenge for me uh, to really identify something that people can identify with. Yeah. And the case was about a mixed couple, a Belgian and uh, like third European countries. So basically that was my target. But unfortunately, uh, what is happening is that I started struggling to find participants. I've been largely contacted a lot of association, a lot of like operators working in the sector, but there were a lot of barriers and uh, so I couldn't find participants at the end and that was a bit disappointing. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it was a starting point for a new reflection. Mm -hmm. okay. So basically what is happening now is that I'm trying to make convening and like gather together groups that are working on the same topics and are doing a lot of on-field work mm -hmm. to see basically if we can cope together for the objective and make a network of like a, a association that can actually support mm -hmm. uh, on the field actually and uh, I hope that it will work well. This, uh, the follow-up situation is going to be in September, so we will see there uh, actually what will be the outcome. But I'm quite uh, happy about like the fact that I could uh, take step forward from the initial plan and uh, still have some uh, some sort of. Uh, of feedback. Mm. Eleonora, so your plan for the future, because you face some challenges initially, um, building relationships and finding participants, what do you think your next steps are? Well, first of all, we will actually, a big part of the work was done in the, like, in the framework of the search for partners, so I established some sort of connection. So the objective is to build trust and, you know, having a stronger relationship with the association that are actually working. Now they know me better, they know the project better, so they might be interested and in, to be more involved in this uh, project. I discuss with them about the issue I face. I try to gather feedback from them. I had a very practical uh, uh, vision such as, you know, like uh, whether to do something in a weekend or when people are working, uh, time constraints, uh, topic. Of course, another thing that was quite shocking for me is was actually the fact that I, I, I felt that actually uh, knowing about their rights is not a priority for uh, like uh, newcomers or participants and as long as everything is going all right, is all right. Mm -hmm. And then when they are facing issue, actually they try to address this issue going from like to organization, lawyer or like addressing the public authority, asking for help. Yeah. But they are not specifically looking for, uh, let's say, generally awareness. Like in advance. Yeah. Like Maybe because everyone's living such precarious lives that, that it's the last thing that is on your mind when you're just trying to survive. That's definitely a point, uh, time constraint, like work, uh, but also I mean that there is uh, an important element and that's why it's very important what you have done so as well, is like language constraints. Uh, I always feel that people is a bit ashamed about like French is a very complex language, in uh, Brussels uh, a lot of people speak French. Yeah. And feeling like engaging in a, in a training without being sure that they will, be, will, they will be able actually to gather all the information, even if it was actually shaped to really thinking about the language limits and so on, I think was also an important element. So a, a big reflection on, on what actually is the, the things that we should provide to them and what is actually useful for them. Yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah, yeah I think if you don't have a huge grasp on the language, talking about some of these terms is really quite difficult and yeah, as you say, some people might not even want to start, they might feel ashamed. Also there is a, a substantial uh, matter because uh, my objective was really like to get closer to law, a legal, uh, the legal uh, word yeah, to legal like, ease. yeah, <laughs> like to, to common people yeah. that were, and it's per se a big challenge. Yeah. So, 
I thought about using the theater as a tool, and uh, I believe that it's still a very good, uh, very good way to involve people. But at the same time, it's very difficult to be explained as well, because like either they are interested in doing theater, and then there are a lot of uh, very nice, interesting program on uh, on theater involvement of migrants, but they are not necessarily focused on the empowering from a legal point of view. So this per se was a challenging uh, um, uh, mission, let's say, but was also a very interesting reflection. So uh, it's, I'm, I'm sure that it will come something good from uh, what I've been through and uh, the feedback I gather and the participants that were like very shyly coming over. So um, they didn't show up or like they were explaining me why they couldn't come. Yeah. So I believe that uh, there is a lot of work to do and I'm very happy. Oh, thanks for telling me about it. Thanks for sharing with me. Okay. <laughs>